Hello people, we are, today is September the 7th, and tomorrow, which is Friday, we're going to head out to the lake, see if we can't get some bass, see if anything's changed out there. It's been a couple of days since we've been able to get out, so I'm, I'm uh, anticipating my fishing uh, my fishing adventure tomorrow and I'm getting my stuff my, all my gear ready got my water some uh, lures some sun clothing just in case I wind up staying out a little later sometimes I do and I want protection from the UV I got my scale in case I catch anything worth weighing I got my trash bag so I can pick up other people's trash I got my needle nose so I can extract fish hooks. I've got my two favorite rod uh, combos here. We have a Johnny Morris uh, Carbon Light 2.0, six foot six inch spinning rod, uh, medium light action with a fast tip. We got that coupled with a Shimano NexSave 2500 spinning reel. Not a bad reel. We got it spooled with 10 pound High Viz Power Pro. I love High Viz. Then we have that uh, Power Pro line attached to a number 12 swivel. On this one, we have another Johnny Morris Carbon Light 2.0. This is a 7 foot 2 inch rod, medium light action with a fast tip. We got that with a Shimano Vanford 2500 reel. Uh, same uh, line, Power Pro braid, 10 pound test. And that's going to a number 12 swivel. We have the, on that swivel, we have uh, some. Uh, 12 pound monofilament leader hooked to a zoom fluke that we're going to take off. I'm going to put a uh, topwater popper on here and I'm going to put probably a rattle trap on here. And we'll start with that. And then we may go to a rooster tail, whatever. But that's what we're going to start with. And then here I just have. A bag devoted to uh, Senkos that goes in there. Here I got a bag devoted to Flukes. I like to keep things a little separate. That goes in there. And then here I got a bag with my top water with a leader in there. I put them in here just to keep the leaders from getting all tangled. Yeah, I like to have uh, leaders on all my lures. Because I'm a swivel nut. I like to have use swivels because it keeps my line from twisting and it also makes when I change lightning quick and I can change up, change up. Certain times you can't use a swivel. Like if you're going to use a, a Texas rig worm, you want that and you don't have your sinker pegged to the line, you want the bass to be able to pull that worm without feeling the weight of that sinker. Of course, I, uh, but I can rig a Carolina rig worm and put the sinker uh, way above the uh, uh, worm on a swivel and a long uh, leader line. But I, but I like swivels and I like to keep all my leaders pre-tied on my lure. So we got the top water. We got our uh, rattle trap. And I think we have an extra uh, rooster tail in here. We're going we're gonna to be throwing all these probably at some point tomorrow though. We'll just take it as it comes. That way I can cover I can cover the top of the water column, the middle of the water column, and the bottom of the water column. And try and get some unsuspecting bass. What I like about the rooster tails, though, is you can catch anything on them. If there's some white bass in there, it'll catch them. Crappie, it'll catch them. Um, it will catch anything. Anything. They're very, I love them. All right. So anyway, we're going to be heading out bright and early tomorrow. It's going to get to be about 107 degrees, so we won't be out long. Maybe three hours at the most. 
but maybe we can catch some bass. We'll find out. The lake level is now about three feet below the 50% full mark. So it's continuing downward. We still have no rain coming and no break in the temperatures. But maybe we can catch some half-boiled bass. All right. God bless, and I'll see you all out there. All right. We just tried the uh, top water. Nothing came of that. So I went ahead and uh, omitted any footage from that. And now we're going to throw the rattle trap. We'll chunk this rattle trap a bit. If nothing comes of that, then we're going to go to the fluke or the wacky worm. Let's see if we can't get something this beautiful Texas morning. We're pretty much just paralleling the bank right now with these lures. I'm not seeing any activity. Last couple of trips out here, it has not been very productive. About the last, about the last two weeks, it's been a rough go out here. This is September 8th. And here in Central Texas, we're begging for rain. It has been dry, 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 and hot, hot, hot. We've been under a biblical a uh we have been under a heat wave and drought of biblical proportions and that is not exaggerating got one right at the bank he got off all right we'll toss this rattle trap a little bit more maybe we can get one more to hit it we're going to go to the either the senko or the fluke got one all right this time let's try and get them in Oh, he's hooked all over the place. He wasn't getting off. Sorry about that, buddy. Not too bad. All right. Our first fish we landed, we missed one about the same size right up against the bank on the uh, rattle trap. Beautiful little fish, and we shall let him go. And there he goes. We'll stick with this rattle trap a little bit longer here. We got a good stiff breeze blowing today though. I'm very grateful for that. Got him. Oh, he threw it. We'll go right back there again. He ain't going to bite again, but he might have a buddy out there with him. Well, we're having a little bit of luck on some smaller ones today. That's, that's better than nothing. Better than what I was getting out here the last, about last seven, eight days. It's been really tough. All right, one more cast with the rattle trap. And then we're going to go to the, probably to the fluke. 
All right, we're going to chunk this zoom fluke for a bit. We're going to start casting out further now. Let it go all the way to the bottom. This lake is about 47% full now. Here in central Texas, we've been under a heat wave and a drought of biblical proportions. I said it, biblical proportions. It's been tough fishing out here about the last eight to 10 days. I mean, it has gotten, it's the toughest it's, it's, it's been out here. That water is hot. That water is low. I don't even see no more bait fish out here. That's something I noticed. About the last two weeks, the bait fish have left. We had a lot of spot tail shiners out here. They've all gone. I don't know if it's a seasonal movement or what, but I'll be sure and notate it on my calendar. We're not gonna be out here long today. The heat is too much for me. And it hasn't been too productive lately. We may start uh, going after uh, catfish and sunfish. I had a good time doing that about six days ago. I'm fishing for anything, anything that'll provide me with a little bit of pleasure I, I enjoy fishing for it oh. Oh. all right Piopo it's that time I gotta make some cross-country trek here get back to my machine and then head to the house we didn't uh, we didn't catch too many today. Actually, we only caught one. We lost about two and missed, I think, a strike or two. But I still had a good time. I still enjoyed coming out here. I love coming out here. This is a part of my life I enjoy. Getting away from everything and just being out here. Uh... These rocks, this is the lake bottom, what you're looking at right now. It's all exposed. Uh, this lake has not been its proper level. Now, I've only been fishing this lake about a year and a half. I've only lived here about two years. But from what I've been able to find out on the internet and talking to people, this lake has not been its the level it should be in probably close to a decade or more. So that tells you a little bit something about this crazy drought slash heat wave we've been in here in central Texas. This is all supposed to be underwater. I should be walking under about 10, 15 feet of water right now. And we need rain very, very badly. When I came, when I moved here, the lake was 76% full. In the two years I've lived here, it is now uh, about 48% full and still going lower. And this is not just something happening here in central Texas. This is something that's been going on several, several states. It's pretty widespread. But, uh, yeah, right here, you can see that where that vegetation starts growing. That water is supposed to be all the way up to the edge of that vegetation and actually higher than that. That vegetation is a little bit misleading because it's had time to grow over the last decade where it would usually be underwater. All right, I gotta find some way to get up here. And we're under something they call the heat dome of doom. The meteorologists refer to it as. So we're dealing with that. Anyway, I had a good time. Hope you all did too. If you like my videos, give it a thumbs up. 
press that subscribe button if I could humbly ask and the notification bell so you know when I post another one but sometimes there's days like this where you just get one and I'm just I'm just being honest keeping it real this is not a premier bass lake it's a lake that uh, is not known to be good for fishing but uh, I still had a great time all right God bless and bye-bye